Hey everyone, Jim here, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to get started with Amazon Web Services Light Sail Service. Uh, Amazon Web Service is a huge cloud provider, the largest in the world, and they offer services that range in, in, in scope and size and cost to organizations and businesses around the globe. Uh, Amazon Light Sail, though, however, is designed for individuals. It's a much more economically priced service that is meant for individual developers that maybe just wanna host one website, or maybe a student that just needs access to a virtual machine to do some coursework. Uh, they're very lightweight and low cost. I say low cost because they are definitely not free, but they do give some, some free trials. So as you can see, currently they're offering three free months of uh, service with select tiers. Um, this is a great way to get started. Uh, as you're gonna see though, when you do create an account, it is gonna ask you for a credit card number. And I mentioned that because you wanna use some caution, even if you take advantage of the, the free tier. Uh, after that, uh, that promotion is done, uh, you will start getting billed and they are gonna bill your credit card. And there isn't really any notification or notice. Uh, the, the actual notice is when the bill actually starts coming in and you get the notification that you have some, some amount of money due. Uh, so to get started, it's pretty easy. Um, you can go ahead and click get started for free. Uh, this will walk you through uh, creating uh, an Amazon account or signing into an Amazon account and then sending it for the AWS service. I, however, already have an account, um, so I don't have to do that. So I was already signed in, so when I click Get Started, um, as you can see, it dropped me into the Light Sale console. Now, the other cool thing about Amazon Web Services Light Sale service is that the console is much more scaled down. Uh, if you've seen the full AWS or Amazon Web Services console, there is tons and tons of stuff going on with it. There are probably hundreds, if not thousands of various Amazon Web Services services you can choose and configure. So the main AWS console is pretty intimidating. This is a much more scaled down. So uh, as you can see now, we have the option to create an instance. Uh, instances is kind of a term to say, like create like a server or a virtual machine. Uh, they call it an instance. So when you create an instance, you're really gonna be creating a virtual machine. Uh, so we can go ahead and we'll click on that. And you have a couple of options. So you can either choose uh, Windows or Linux. Uh, it really depends on your purpose. Um, I'll do uh, Windows because uh, it's easier to get started with for most users. Uh, though if I was gonna do this for real, um, typically I would use, when I'm thinking about setting up cloud services, I'm generally more of a Linux person, but I'll go with, with Windows for today. Uh, and you can also select a location. So depending on your location, uh, you may have to pay a different rate. Um, certain locations are more expensive than others. So why would you wanna choose one location over another aside from just looking at the cost? Well, you wanna think about where you are and where your customers are that are actually gonna be accessing this server. Um, if you were to select a server in Asia, as an example, um, there'd be a lot of latency and lag because I'm over here in Wisconsin. Uh, so you wanna, again, select something that is both close and reasonably priced. Uh, I'll just leave it at the default, uh, Virginia. Uh, that's a couple hundred miles for me, uh, maybe about a thousand miles, but the latency won't be too bad. And I do wanna to mention to you, as you uh, toggle between Windows and Linux, uh, you're gonna see some options, uh, both apps and OS and OS only. And I also wanna to note too, that Windows is generally more expensive than Linux. And this is because with Linux, the operating system is completely free and open source. But with Windows, Microsoft needs a fee for licensing Windows. So Windows machines are more expensive. So just be mindful of that. Um, so next, I'm gonna go ahead and look at these options. Uh, I'll go ahead and sure, I'll select a Windows Server. And as you can see, there isn't really like a Windows desktop option. You don't see Windows 10 or Windows 11. And again, services that run on the cloud are generally meant to be servers. So they're gonna have operating systems that kind of reflect their uh, intended purpose. So we have the server version of Windows and a lot of these Linux operating systems as well um, are geared towards more server purposes. Uh, so you're, you're not gonna find as many consumer operating systems like Windows 10. You also have the, the opportunity to deploy apps along with your virtual machine. So if you wanted to like deploy a LAMP server, you can go ahead and just select Linux, select WordPress, um, and you could deploy essentially a LAMP server in just a couple of clicks. And if you are thinking about doing the, the if you're thinking about doing the three free months under the AWS free tier, I just be mindful that most of the time those only include Linux hosts and not Windows because Windows is more expensive. So make sure you pay attention to those details. Uh, but let's just try just the standard uh, Microsoft Windows. Uh, we'll do server 2019. And now we can actually see the rates. Uh, so as you can see, uh, we get the first three months for free, which is excellent. And the rates range between $8 a month to $20 a month. And if I uh, switch it to Linux, you're gonna see that, I'll just do Linux, OS only. 
Um, we'll do Ubuntu. And you'll see that the rates are significantly cheaper for the free three month trial. You get three months at anywhere from $350 to $10 a month. Um, and you can look at those as well. But, so going back to Windows, uh, generally for like a Windows virtual machine, uh, I'd recommend like this option right here. And that's because Windows typically requires more memory to run efficiently. Windows has more bloat traditionally than Linux does. Uh, but this is expensive, right? $40 a month. Um, so be mindful of that. So if you uh, if you deploy this machine and you forget to turn it off and delete it when you're done with it, uh, you're going to continuously get billed $40 a month. These other options for Windows in particular, uh, they will work, but they're going to be really slow. Uh, if you try to run, run Windows Server with 512 megabytes of RAM, uh, probably not going to work. Uh, so let's give this a try. Um, I'll do the free tier. Let's try this two this two gigabyte option, one vCPU. Probably going to be ridiculously slow, uh, but we'll see how it works. Uh, I can give your instance a name. Uh, so if this is for like a uh, a project, or uh, maybe you're doing like an assignment or something for a course, uh, you can go ahead and give this a name if you want. I'll just leave this as default for now. Uh, you can add in keys for remote connectivity and things like that. I'll just leave that as default for now. And we're going to go ahead and click create instance. And this process will take a few minutes. Uh, it's significantly faster than if you had to like install Windows yourself on your own uh, hardware, uh, but it does take a few minutes. So it's going to go from this pending state and eventually to this uh, ready or on state. Um, and you can see the zone right here. And you can see the amount of storage that's available, uh, 60 gigabytes of solid state storage space um, that's in here. So the way that this works is uh, you are billed both, both based off of um, how much storage your server is consuming, whether it's powered on or off, uh, because Amazon has to store your, your data, whether you're actively using it or not. And then you're also charged a consumption fee based off of how much memory and processing power your server has. And this is generally charged primarily when the server is running. So if you're running your server, it's going to charge that you know 20 or $40 a month um, when it's running. But this is really cool because you're, you're generally charged by the hour. So uh, if you only need this server for, uh, let's say, a couple of hours, uh, you can create it, run it for a couple of hours, and then when you're done, delete it and only have to pay you know, less than a dollar, which is, which is awesome. It makes, it makes accessing operating systems like this um, really easy. Uh, but again, use caution because you are billed for it. Uh, whether it's running or not, but generally it's more expensive when it's running. Uh, if this machine was shut down, you again, you'd be charged primarily just for the storage. And for this machine in particular, instead of being $20 a month, uh, you'd probably more likely be something like, you know, a couple dollars a month just to have it powered off and quote unquote, you know, saved um, just so you could power it back on just in case you needed it. Um, so it's running. So as you can see, it took about a minute to, uh, to create or to provision this uh, virtual machine. And when I click on this now, um, it's going to give us an IP address, and this is a public IP address. Uh, because this is a Windows uh, virtual machine, you connect to it using the remote desktop client. So if you're using Windows and you want to connect to this virtual machine, uh, the remote desktop client uh, is built into Windows. If you're using a Mac OS, uh, then you would have to install the remote desktop protocol client from the App Store. If you open up the Apple App Store, you can search for Microsoft RDP, and you're going to find the official Microsoft app that allow you to do it. So I'm going to copy this IP address into my clipboard, and I'm going to load up the remote desktop protocol client. If you're in Windows, you can search for MSTSC. It stands for Microsoft Services Terminal Services Client. And you're going to type in that IP address, click Connect. Now, what you're going to do is you're going to say More Choices, use a different account, and type in Administrator and the password that ADBS provides to you. And it looks like the password isn't ready quite right yet. Uh, I'm just going to refresh the page. And the password is not quite ready. Um, so what I'll do is I'll just pause this video for a second. Um, I think it should only take a few more minutes here for this uh, password to be available. And we'll resume in a, in a second here when I get back. All right, that was literally like uh, less than 10 seconds. I just essentially paused the video, refreshed it, and now it has appeared. So here is the password that Amazon has provided to us. So I can go ahead and put that in. Accept the security warning. And it is going to connect us. So I believe, yeah, we set this up with like, I think it was like two gigabytes of memory. So this is going to be pretty slow, uh, but that's OK. So you can see uh, what one of the, the slower Windows virtual machines, how it actually runs. 
And the speed of this virtual machine is going to be entirely dependent on how you configured it within AWS. Um, generally speaking, the speed of your host computer, your, your computer you're sitting literally in front of, um, is not gonna really make that big of a difference. Uh, you're, you're, so if you allocate uh, crappy resources to your virtual machine, it's gonna run slowly. If you allocate tons of memory and tons of resources to it, it's gonna run really snappy and be really speedy, um, which is again why cloud services are pretty cool. Um, so it looks like it made this fairly large. Let me see if I can resize this window here. Might not let me do it through here since I'm in a remote session. Yeah, I can't change the scaling. Uh, maybe I can do it here. I'm just gonna go into uh, zoom. No, 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 smart, smart sizing. Let's try that. There we go. Okay, cool. So, all right. So here I am inside of my virtual machine. And as you can see, I am remoted into it. I apologize that the text is a little bit small. Um, I don't think that's really gonna matter though for this. Uh, can I zoom? I could try setting the zoom size here. No, where did it go? Full screen. No, no, no. Yeah, it's okay. Well, this is fine. This will work. Uh, but if I go into system settings, number one, you see it's kind of laggy uh, because it only has two gigabytes of memory. But if you look at this, you can actually see my eyes are not the best. Uh, here we go. Installed physical memory, two gigabytes. I know that's really small. Uh, you can even open up things like the task manager. And you can see, you know, the processor, you have the, the one CPU core, the two gigabytes of memory. So whatever you had allocated to it in the light sale console is what you're gonna, was what you're gonna have access to right here. And this is a full-blown Windows server. You can do whatever you want with this. You could install Chrome on this and just use this as like a remote system just to do work in. Um, you could install Microsoft IIS. You could turn this into a domain controller. Uh, you could do whatever you want with it. So when you're done though, it is important to uh, make sure that uh, you, you shut this down and then delete it if uh, you're not planning on using it. So it's pretty easy to do that. Uh, you just click stop, click stop. And there's this delete button right here. You say delete instance. Yes, delete the instance. Uh, acknowledge that you are really going to delete it. No, it says you cannot delete instance while well, it is transporting, trans transitioning. Uh, so we gotta wait for it to stop. Uh, but once it is actually deleted, then you will no longer be billed. Let's give it a second. And I'm kind of an impatient person. I don't like having, having to wait for progress bars, especially when I'm trying to record a video. Let's try it one more time. Okay, well, I'm gonna give it a, a second. I'll pause the video and we can resume it when we're ready to delete the machine. All right, let's go some more try. And there we go. So no more instances. So that just about wraps it up for our AWS overview video. If you have any questions, uh, feel free to let me know. Um, again, just make sure you uh, turn off and delete your machines when you're not using them. Um, I've been bitten by that before and accidentally you know, uh, have gotten a bill in, in, in my email inbox. So just keep that in mind and I will talk to you all later.